Hi guys, how are you today? Welcome back to my channel, Adventures in America. If you are new to my channel, my name is Jocelyn and for today's topic, I'm going to discuss the options for non-Filipinos or former Filipinos who are planning to stay in the Philippines for good. Now you have other options as a former Filipino. You can actually apply for dual citizenship at the Bureau of Immigration in Manila. I'm going to provide the information for specific requirements so you can become a dual citizen in the Philippines and you can stay in the Philippines for good after acquiring dual citizenship. There is an important advisory for all clients of the Bureau of Immigration starting January 7 of 2022. For those unvaccinated, you must secure an online appointment and for those vaccinated, you can walk in just present your vaccine card or certificate there is an important advisory to the public there is a reduced capacity due to surge in covid and fully vaccinated are exempt from the online appointment and unvaccinated and registered aliens must secure an online appointment for former filipinos who wanted to apply for dual citizenship you can have the option of applying at the philippine consulate or embassies abroad or if you are traveling to the philippines you can also apply at the bureau of immigration in manila the first requirement is that you must file a petition form for retention or acquisition of philippine citizenship under ra 9225 here's the first paragraph you must state your name in philippine document or if you have other name in a foreign passport also state your age and if you are male or female or single widow, divorced, annulled, separated, or married, or your marriage status, and uh, spouse, if you have a spouse. And you need to state you are a citizen of a certain country, your residence and contact number, and in number one, state where you were born, and state your father's name, mother's name, and number two, how you lost your Philippine citizenship, and this is because of the naturalization in a foreign country and state your passport information and number three the information for the oath of allegiance you will have to do this once you submitted all the documents and then number four if this is an information that you can provide then provide it as well now, number five, you can also include your children. Please sign over printed name and provide the date and under verification, provide your signature and also it must be notarized. You must also attach two, two by two photograph. Here are the checklist of documents. First, you must accomplish the verified petition and second, you must have a 2x2 two two photograph. Number three, you need to have two original copies of the Oath of Allegiance before an authorized Bureau of Immigration legal officer. Number four, if the Oath of Allegiance cannot be taken before an authorized legal officer, submit the following two original copies of the Oath of Allegiance before any person duly authorized and affidavit of justification stating the reason. Number five, original copy of proof as natural born Philippine citizen. There are several documents that you can present. Number six, original and photocopy of valid foreign passport. Seven, photocopy of certificate of naturalization. And if you are a registered alien, so for former Filipinos, only for number one to seven, and if you are also a registered alien, for example, you have other visa, you must present your original alien certificate of registration or immigrant. Now, number nine, if there is a variance or there is a discrepancy in your name, you must provide an affidavit of one and the same person and you must provide this uh, statement acknowledging all obligations, responsibilities, and liabilities under all names and an explanation on the discrepancies. 
and also substantial proof of how the applicant acquired the varied name such as your marriage. If you have a dependent child, please provide the other requirements and also you must certify, state your name and the date. Here is the procedure for applying for dual citizenship. First, you must have the checklist of required documents which I have just shown you in the video. Second, you must submit the documents for pre-screening. Third, take an oath of allegiance. Fourth, get the order of payment slip and then pay the fees. And then you can verify the status of application. And then if approved, there are actually three documents for dual citizenship. How much does it cost to be a dual citizen? This is in the Philippines. The cost is 2,500 pesos which is equivalent to $50 in the U.S. or in other Philippine consulates abroad. There is an express fee of $500, oh, I mean 500 pesos, and the cost is 3010 and I believe this is the cost up to this time. If you are a former Filipino, you can also stay in the Philippines, but it is actually limited. Because you are no longer a Filipino, you cannot use your Philippine passport to travel in the Philippines. It is only to show your proof of former Filipino citizen if you wanted to avail of the Balikbayan visa. If you are a former Filipino and you arrive in the Philippines, you can avail of the Balikbayan visa for one year. This Balikbayan visa is extendable to your foreign spouse or foreign children all you have to do is to go to the filipino lane and you have to ask the immigration officer that you will be availing of the balikbayan visa and then you can stay in the philippines for one year now before the expiration of one year you must renew or leave the philippines if you renew your balikbayan visa you have to pay the fees at the Bureau of Immigration Office. Now, if you are a former Filipino and you wanted to stay in the Philippines permanently and you wanted to have more flexibility, there is what we call a 13G visa for returning former Filipino. It's actually a visa equivalent as a permanent residence in the Philippines. But if I am a former Filipino, my best option is to apply for dual citizenship. However, if you have other reservations and you don't want to become a dual citizen or you don't want to become a Filipino again, you can apply for this 13G visa. This is actually a form of permanent resident visa in the Philippines for returning former Filipinos. Now, what is this 13G visa or an immigrant visa for returning former Filipinos? The visa may be applied by a natural-born citizen of the Philippines who has been naturalized in a foreign country and is returning to the Philippines for permanent residence, including his or her spouse and minor children, shall be considered a non-quota immigrant for purposes of entering the Philippines. Now, if you apply for a 13G visa, you will be treated as an alien and you will be subject to re-entry per meet. What does it mean? So every time you leave the Philippines, you must apply for a re-entry permit so you can go back. However, when you don't have this re-entry permit and you leave the Philippines, you actually lose this privilege. Now, this is not extendable to your family members. Please take note when you apply for a visa in the Philippines, this is personal to you. Now, if you want your family to apply, all of you must apply separately. Now, if you are a returning former Filipino, you can apply for 13G visa at the nearest Philippine consulate abroad or at the Bureau of Immigration in the Philippines. Now, what are the benefits and privileges of a 13G visa granted to a returning Filipino citizen or returning former Filipino citizen who wanted to stay permanently in the Philippines. Please take note that the Philippines is still using 
the old Philippine Immigration Act of 1940. If the new Philippine Immigration Law will take effect in the future, this will affect all of those uh, visas. Now, the 13G visa is governed by the Philippine Immigration Act of 1940. This is still the current immigration law in the Philippines. Now, 13G visa holders can stay indefinitely in the Philippines. You can establish a business, you can own stocks, you can form an association or corporation, you have a right of access to the courts, you are allowed to work without securing an alien certificate or alien work permit. Also, you may acquire or purchase a condominium or land in the Philippines. And you can also buy a car. However, there are responsibilities or obligations. First, you must respect or obey the laws of the Philippines. Second, you must register at the Bureau of Immigration. And third, you must inform the Bureau of Immigration if there are changes in your residence address or domiciliary address. Now, how long is the processing of this returning Filipino visa? It actually takes about 40 days depending on the volume of applications at the Bureau of Immigration or at the Philippine Consulate Abroad covering your residence. Please share in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts regarding the different options. Thank you guys for watching and if you have any other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for supporting my channel and if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.